Okay guys, we got more aluminum to drill right after this. Welcome back, what's going on? I got another plate of aluminum here, 12 inch by 12 inch. If I think, I believe it's like right at 11 millimeters thick, 300 by 300, 11 millimeters thick. And I have to cut out two brackets and peck holes, drill holes, peck holes for backing plate for my, it'll be for the X axis on the Z gantry on my big Jimitsu behind me, my 1300 by 1300 machine. The smaller one is doing all my aluminum work. So I've got an eighth inch O flute bit in here and we got them all set up. So I, hopefully, I've never tried pecking before. Hopefully if I got this right, I got like five bit changes. I'm gonna go around and peck everything and then I'll load up the next path and candle. And then I have to go around, I got two little tiny holes that I wanna mark so I can drill once I take it off the machine so I don't have to print out a trick template. It'll go down two millimeters on two holes. Then I have a bunch of holes that I have to go in and what do you call it? Countersink. They're oval holes and I gotta countersink them so hopefully this will work good for that. And then I'll switch out bits to my quarter inch O flute and then I'll cut out both of them, which will be right in here. I do have blue tape, as you can see here in this picture, and I glued it down. The reason for that is I don't want to use tabs. I don't want to have to grind them. I want it to be as clean as possible. So I've got it clamped down. The clamp should be out of the way. There's going to be one here and one here. So let me get on my uh, safety glasses, earmuffs, put them hyperlapse, and we'll get going. And I got a speed setting of five. On this Jimitsu. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.
Hey guys, let me show you where I'm at on everything here and explain a few things that happened. Now, when I was cutting these two plates out, <laughs> oh boy. Well, when I was cutting these two plates out, as you've seen, I learned how to peck drill. And I peck drilled everything and everything went fine. That was with the eighth inch oak flute bit picture here on the screen. And everything was going great. And then I had to come and I had to wall out these holes down below here. One, there's one, two, three of them. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I was working on all them, and it was way too aggressive. And as you've seen in my settings, I had it screwed up. I snapped the bit right away. <laughs> that was my oh shit moment you see on the screen. So after that, I put my quarter inch bit back in. I feel a lot better using that bit. But once again, I had my settings wrong. I hadn't had I had hadn't changed them from what the default value was. When I originally started cutting all this stuff in these plates last week, I took a screenshot of what settings worked for me, but once I went back in and got all this stuff designed and ready to go, I forgot to change some of my settings. Now, the Jimitsu router here, which has tape on it because it just started to go crazy on me, that's on a speed setting of 5. So that's on a speed setting of 5. But my feeds are way off. So then I got my quarter inch bit. I managed to get them done but it's really rough as you've seen in the video. Then it starts to do a perimeter cut. But before that ever started, I started clogging up my bit really bad, as you'll see here. So I got online and I Googled how to fix it. It's saying drain cleaner, soak it for 24 hours, this and that. So I did that. I went ahead and soaked it. And then I found a pick tool that I had the next morning. I rinsed it off in water. I grabbed that pick tool and I started picking at it. And I was able to pull that piece of metal out, that aluminum that was caked into the O flute. You know, the channel. So that worked out good. I saved it. Even though I had no one on order, one was coming to replace it. I was able to save it. So I figured, okay, let's go back in the software in the house and carve co maker. And since this one I started to cut out, but it looked terrible, let's go ahead and start cutting this one out. And then if it fails, at least you have a perimeter. You got somewhere to go to with a chop saw or peanut grinder or whatever. You'll have your outline. So I done this side. And as you've seen, this side came out perfect. I went back over here, started doing this side. And then <laughs> candle on my computer, which is right there, had an alarm on it. <laughs> it's hot in Vegas. I don't have air conditioning in here. Oh, boy. So I guess the Jumitsu overheated on me. And it thrown an error. And then I said flashed on the screen once really quick. It blinked. It blinked. Uh, what was it? Alarm really quick. Anyway, had alarm error. Had a problem and it stopped. So then I had to stop. Took it off the machine. This one was finished. This one was still not cut out all the way. Broke out my peanut grinder. And I cut it out with a peanut grinder. Then I got some sanding paper on my orbital, orbital sander. Went around and cleaned up all the edges. So I finally was able to save it. It was just a lot of work. Got a small little gash right there on the top left. But um, came out really good. But I went to my drill press. And I got the other holes that weren't finished. I got those drilled out. And then I tapped them. I had a, some drill taps, which I have right here that I had bought. They got a tap down here in the middle and drill bit at the top. And those work really good for these ones that go all the way through. They work really well. I started them um, with a drill tap, and then I wound up doing them by hand. I took the bit off. I put a T-handle, and I'm sitting there, you know, I'm carefully... Going in with it, putting WD-40 on it, you know, keeping it well lubricated. And I managed to get all those done. And then I come over to that block of aluminum you seen me cut with my uh, Diablo blade on uh, my DeWalt miter chop saw. So I got that cut down. And I started milling this piece. Well, as you can see, it's too tall. So the first thing I did is I had to mill the whole thing down to the right height. Then I got that done and I started cutting this side out. And then it got over and started milling this side, as you've seen in the prior video. And it got down, I don't know how far it went, a few passes. And then the machine alarmed out again, had another problem. Oh, and I got a big fan blowing on it this time, thinking, oh my God. So I went in the house, I reworked the program so it's not trying to cut both sides. It's just going after this side. And I kept putting a caliper in there, lots of WD-40 and a caliper until I got this down to the same height as this side. Then I stopped the program. Now, but I had a lip all the way around, so when I designed it in CarbCo, I had the blueprints from David Guy that I bought off Etsy, but I didn't size it properly in CarbCo Maker, which had that little lip. 
I was just a little bit too small. It was like a swimming pool, basically. It had slides on it. So I took my peanut grinder and my orbital sander, and I got it all cleaned up. And I went ahead with my, uh, since I've been having so much trouble, I figured, you know what, let's just go back to the diode laser. Went back over the diode laser, I printed out all of the templates like I did in the prior video, and I got all my holes drilled on my uh, drill press. And I got these tapped right here by hand that worked out really well. Put in a small pilot hole and I got those done out. And drill taps here. Um, I don't have any metal countersink bits, so I used a drill bit to countersink those. Then I have the template here on the side. And once I did those using, uh, what size was it? M4 by 7, I think it was. I think that's the one I was using. Or an M5 by 8. M M5 by 8, that's the one I was using right here. And that didn't work out properly. The, the threads are down and they're really far and none of the bolts are grabbing, so I got a new tap on the way. So I can get, try to get those tapped out to a larger size, and I believe I'm going with an M6 by 10. And I'll try to do those six by hand so I don't ruin this plate. Got a lot of time invested in trying to get this made. And basically, that'll get sandwiched in here like this. And that'll go there. there that one will go on the bottom. And then I got the one at the other end to do. And that will be going on this CNC right here on my Z-axis plates. You know, where the X goes all the way across, so I have another one of these to make. Now, my linear rails, yay, they came off Etsy. They're exactly like I wanted. They're the right length. This is steel. This is aluminum. I need to shake cut off about an inch on each one. I measured each one of them for my rail inside the blue plate here, inside the blue plate in the back. And I measured four rails, so this will be left, this will be right, and this will be for my X. So these are my Y, these are my X. Then I got these cut down. These two here are not cut down yet. I got to get back there and measure them so I can get them cut down. But I'm going to be replacing the wheels. My heavy brackets are made. I got those done right here. If for some reason I'm unable to tap this and get this to work with these plates, where is it? Right here. Y top and bottom. I have the, the blocks right here. These blocks, they go on here, they bolt up top, bolt up on bottom, and they'll attach to these plates. If I have to, I can use those. I'm hoping that I can get this worked out and fixed. I've, as you know, I've never worked with aluminum before in my life until it came to these plates last week. And then I got these done. But, yeah, I, I need air conditioning in my shop, basically. So I had a big fan. Got a big commercial fan right there. I had that blown towards the CNC to keep it cool, keep me cool. I didn't have the garage door open because I don't want to freak out the neighbors. I had it cracked to help muffle a lot of the sound. And that's kind of where we're at. Uh... Please like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment down below. David Guy just put out his first video the other day where he's using an eighth inch bit and he's milling all his aluminum and plates. He sells these over on his Etsy site. Um, I don't believe he's selling the plans no more. Like I was able to get too many different issues, so he decided he'll just make the different parts where you can buy these from him. You can buy these plates. All, everything already made up. <clears throat> you know, you'll just have to check with his site. I'll have a link down below. Um, I'll link his video down below. I'll put a link where you can watch his video where he's working with an eighth inch bit Which I'm afraid to do with aluminum as you see the peck drilling came out fine But eighth inch bit I had my feeds wrong right here and I just snapped broke it right away So I got a replacement and I'll just have to you know t You know it takes time to learn how to do things properly, you know, I'll just have to learn with my mistakes and like I say, once again, we'll have everything linked down below. And, oh boy. Yeah, I'm kind of winded here. In the house working on this video, and I just wanted to try to polish it up, but finish off the end of it. But please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you all to my YouTube uh, subscribers, Patreons, sponsors, everybody. I'll list them here on the screen. Appreciate each and all you guys. Thank you very much, David Guy, for all the help you've been giving me. I've been... Uh, messaging him on Etsy, and he's been helping me out with a lot of questions that I've had. Really appreciate you, buddy. I'm, without you, I wouldn't be doing it the way I'm doing it. <clears throat> and then the man that originally told me about David Guy, I'll put his name here on the screen. A shout out to you. I can't remember what your name is offhand, but thank you very much. He's also done some upgrades on his. He's over on the Sane Smart site on Facebook. You can see some of his upgrades. And I'm just about ready to go here and start tearing this apart and rebuilding it. 
and seeing how it comes out. So please like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate everybody that's watched my prior video, and I hope you like this one just as much. Until next time, guys, you have a great day. Later.